Michael Keaton is a holiday ham. I don't know about that, but I sure like it when pigs fly. Join us. Hey everyone, welcome back to Azhar with Nick John and special guest Kyle. So we are continuing our Miyazaki journey into Studio Ghibli, and now we are on Poco Rosso. So my first time watching, of course, expert Kyle has seen it many times. Of course, Nick uh, has first seen time. it many times. No, it's, it's his first time. Yeah. But he's still an expert. So we're going to talk <laughs> about this, and we're going to start off with Kyle here, still an expert, but we're well, going to hear his thoughts. Before we hear Kyle, we're going to let you know we've covered tons of Miyazaki movies. Go to our YouTube channel, watch them all from Spirit Away, Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, and Nausicaa. Whoa! When that when we get to the all 11 movies, that's going to be hard to name yeah, them all. Yeah, you're going to be like out of breath there, buddy. Yeah. But, uh, and then also follow Kyle on Instagram. He's amazing Instagram, Pecos with a zero. Now, Kyle! Let us Whoa. into your world of po- Porco Rosso. <laughs> <laughs> My world? Wow, no. That um, sounds awkward, okay, no, so <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, I'll roll with it. It's cool. No, uh, um, it's, He'll fly uh, <laughs> with it. He's going to fly with <laughs> it. He's going to fly with it, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this was, I feel like this was Miyazaki's love letter to, to like, aircraft and just, like, mm. aerial, you know, design and stuff like that. Like, man, um, it was actually really cool because this was the first one that I felt that he tried to directly connect something from world history in with like his, his sort of story, right? Cause we're, mm-hmm. we're very much in fascist Italy in the late 1920s. Right. Yeah, so yeah. it's, and it's like, you get that vibe, right? Like, okay, Mussolini's calling the shots. Right. And like, there's very much like these factions that are forming mm-hmm. right in the country. And it's hard for Porco Rosso to like move about because of that. Um, and it's really cool. Plus like um, the 1920s are like uh, my, um, like one of my favorite, like sort of like time periods. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, uh, also you can tell this is very clearly before the stock market crash, uh, because everyone's really whining and dining, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is <laughs> very true. true. Yeah. So to talk about the plane thing, I found out with my research this time that his father worked in an airplane factory. He yeah. might've actually even owned one. So he grew up around airplanes. So like his love for airplanes, like really has its roots, like with yeah. like, being in there with the designs and the building. And that was such a fun part of the movie and everything too. And I, uh, so good. And then the, the whole 1920s things, I was getting Casablanca vibes mm, in yeah, this movie, like sure. crazy. Like even with the music motifs and like, I got it. I, I just have to go Dame or like, he like hangs up the phone. <laughs> like you feel, know, but like that kind of like vibe and how he doesn't want to help anyone but himself. And you know, like, right. he, instead of like, you know, the, the Nazis, you have the fascists, you know, and they're, it's like this whole thing where it's like playing a little bit with Ca- Casablanca themes. I feel like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys see that now? I don't know. This time I like really realized I mean, it. I, I, it. I, I just yeah. like the period in general. It was fun looking at that and you're like, okay, this is a very, and obviously it just, it, it looks like that period and it has a very distinct look to it, but it's just, yeah. I, I don't know if I got Casablanca in particular, because when I think Casablanca, I always think of black and white immediately. And so mm. seeing color would have thrown me off, but did, were you getting, I can kind of see it now that you mentioned it, but yes. were you, did you have any leanings, Kyle? No, not not in particular. Um, in terms of like, does it remind me of a specific mm-hmm. movie? Yeah, it it might have maybe reminded me of one movie. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, dude, from hell. Like one scene, <laughs> the Rocketeer. Okay. Oh, uh, Rocketeer uh, at the end when they're, when they're having the uh, the aerial combat contest. Basically, it reminds me of like the air show at the beginning of the Rocketeer. Oh. Um, but yeah. Uh, was a good Man, I haven't seen that movie in forever. I used, I mean, when I was a kid, that was, I had that, that was like a good always one too. in the VCR. Yeah. yeah, that was a really, really good one that you don't hear talked about very often. No, no, you don't. And that's oh, around yeah. the same time. Um, so I'd so, say, sorry. Oh, so I just wanted to give a little bit of history. So this was based off of a three-part manga series called The Flying Boat. And it was done with watercolor. And originally it was going to be a short oh, story. Sure. And mm-hmm. then originally they were going to do it as an ad for an airline. <laughs> like a movie was gonna be an ad, and then they ended up just he came up with this movie. Like uh-huh. this is like his his first time really coming up with something. I think just go. Like he didn't really yeah. have a thing in mind. He was just kind of going with it. And then one interesting as interesting thing I read too in an interview is <clears throat> before they even added the voice dubs, he sat there and watched the whole movie just with silence, just like watching everything. Whoa. And then they added the dubs and stuff like that in, and I was just or the voices in. I'm like, that's so crazy to just have such a vision to be able to watch it without audio and just just to make sure everything works and stuff. Because he did not think this movie was going to do well at all. 
he was just like, I don't oh, know. Shit. Like he was like, ah, I just kind of, you know, and it ended up being the, his, one of his best films until spirited away came out. That's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> crazy That's nuts. it's just so crazy and he's always shocked by the the whole success of, of, of the movie he's always just like i had no idea i didn't think it was going to do that well at all kind of thing but yeah it's like it's weird yeah because it it sounds like from what you described like he it was like aimless yet inspired right so he's yes. just like i don't know what the idea is but i'm just gonna kind of go with it and and it kind of feels it that me. way for me because yeah i didn't yeah. Spoilers, just in case if you guys haven't watched the movie, spoilers. But I didn't expect the way to end the way it did, like with the fight scene and them like battling it out in the water. <laughs> and he's so bruised up. Oh my gosh, I loved how bruised up he is in the yeah. glasses. The Missing glasses are like, like yeah. <laughs> it's so good. But like yeah, he's not the whole fight scene. Like I did not expect it to go that way, and I did, uh, and it and it was cool because like everyone kind of got what they wanted at the end. The the mm. the Texas American guy became an actor, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and then um didn't Porco, become president though. No, he didn't. He didn't become so yeah, maybe he, not. He, you don't scratch that idea. No, but. no, 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 no. I, <laughs> that I think we're that going guy with this. that guy reminded me of I don't know if you guys remember Peter Jackson's King Kong, where the the guy that's supposed to be the actor he always has the posters of himself hanging up everywhere. Oh yeah, and yeah. I, so he's like he, you know you see him on the posters up there and he's like acting all cool I'm like oh it kind of reminds me of that a little bit which is also kind of that I don't know if that's that time period as well but it's kind of funny he's, he just wants to pump I'm gonna be great I'm like okay yeah I gotta but yeah I gotta say that like Carrie Elvis did a great job and like yes he did voicing yeah. the character because like I got the sense of like he's like a mix between sophisticated Southern gentleman meets like a Western yes. bravado. Right. Perfect. Just like, ha ha, you know, like the voice. He actor does like, those so roles very well. I mean, he did that role in Bram Stoker's Dracula very well. He's done that he, kind of a princess bride. He kind of played that a little, not, not really high, high end gentleman, but like, you know, just kind of, and yeah, he was, was, was he well. Robin Hood in men in tights? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah <laughs> anyway back to porco <laughs> though the well go staying staying on the on the voice stuff oh yes and, and keeping on porco uh i was not too crazy about michael keaton as porco <laughs> really like he, he it sort of grew on me as the as it was progressing but like i was still like this is no like like the original english dub was was a uh, uh Jean uh, uh, Jean Rio, and I'm really curious. Um, oh, how he Jean Rio, or, Jean or Jean, Reno? Jean, it's, it's he's French. The the French guy, Jean. No, Jean you mean Rio from or, professional? The yes, professional? the professional. Yes, yeah. really, yeah, that would have been. He was the voice of Porco, so I'm like, oh, that would have been wow. killer to hear. That that would have been interesting. Did you know who we're talking about, Nick? No, but so you liked Christian Bale better as a voiceover than you did Michael Keaton? Yes. Oh, interesting. You know what? So the so Batman. You like the other so Batman. you like the other that's Batman. Fine, you know? yeah. <laughs> that's you why I was asking. You know? <laughs> but anyways, John, are you happy now? You got to hear both Batmans now. In, I know, in the- <laughs> which is funny because Christian Bale, I immediately, the first time he grumbled a little bit, I'm like, oh, Christian Bale. Mm-hmm. This one, I actually listened for a while. I, I need to look up the actor. It's going to drive me crazy. Yeah. I did not recognize it being Michael Keaton. And of course, as soon as I looked it up, I'm like, oh, okay, of course, I should have gotten that. But it didn't bother me. I mean, he kind of has. I kind of liked it. That's what's funny about it. You didn't yeah, like it, but I'm I, like, I thought he no, played yeah, Porco pretty fun. good. Yeah, I thought <laughs> he, he played because I haven't seen a huge amount of Michael Keaton movies, but the movies I have seen, I mean, he kind of has that demeanor a little bit. You know, he plays. Got some swagger, well, huh? So, Though, yeah, he got a little bit of swagger. So I felt like it was pretty. I mean, now if, if, if they would have gotten Humphrey Bogart, like, okay, you know, we're going back to Casablanca. All right, that would have been fun, too. You know, like, I don't know. But, though, though I got to say alive, the rest but, yeah. The rest of the voice cast really solid though, like I mean, yeah. so Kim who Williams Paisley as as, as Fio, uh, yeah. really who good. Yeah, who is she? I, I, who uh, is Kim, she? Kim Williams Paisley. Uh, I don't, I don't exactly know. Okay, she, she did a great she job. She sounded familiar though, and she did a very good job. Right, and then and then Susan Egan as Gina. So, she, hearing that voice, she's definitely done other vo- voiceovers before, mm-hmm. and she mm-hmm. she's You're great nice. for that role because she plays the sophisticated woman very well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, David Ogden steers as uh, Piccolo, which is <laughs> my personal favorite. Uh, <laughs> and Piccolo. then uh, Brad, Brad Garrett, which is another like a close second uh, as the Mama Oita or Oito gang boss. You know, he's got hey, a big guys, bully this voice. Way. Yeah. 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 Hey, let's do this. And then, <laughs> and then did you guys catch SpongeBob, who who uh, SpongeBob's eh. voice actor was? He was Ferrari no. in this one. He was, oh, he he was, was Ferrari? Porco Rosso's fi- friend, yeah. 
Oh, oh trip out. Where they're in the theater and, and he's, he steals his popcorn uh-huh. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, that, I, I really enjoyed the voice acting in this one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's kind of nice sometimes when you don't recognize every third voice actor and they're just good at their roles, yeah. but yeah. you're not being distracted. I forgot which one it was, but one of the movies, oh, it was Billy Crystal. I'm like, he's Billy Crystal. Like, I couldn't <laughs> it's not Billy Crystal, hear. though. It's Billy it's, Crystal. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Billy, Billy Crystal, Crystal, which I loved. He did the role great, but it's like some voices, again, the same thing it's when Billy. we're talking about yeah. actors, you can't not see the actor. Whereas in this, most of the voices, it sounds like Kyle's a little bit distracted by Michael Keaton, but overall, in most of these, in most of these, the voice actors just really meshed into, mm-hmm. into the characters they're portraying. And then we got to talk about the visuals in this movie. Oh my gosh. Movie. Yes. Gosh. Let us do it. They're so freaking amazing. The way he animates the planes flying, and, and it, this is all hand drawn. Yeah, like it's so freaking insane. Just the having to draw planes in perspective like that. Sw- you know, know, sometimes I they would use reference. Yeah, I'm assuming they would use reference. Oh, sure. like models and yeah. But I mean, it's just. But, but still, these planes I mean, like, though are like. It was not so real good. Planes. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that it was hand drawn. Sometimes I'm like, this is just. It's too good. Like man, and and then I love the cuts too when he's even like doing the foot pedal stuff and like turning yes. and like, and then like fixing stuff too, like while he's flying. And one oh, of my favorite so things good. is where they're communicating with the, with the flashing Morse code thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. They even have like a, like a, like a little bit about it. Right. It's like, Hey, yeah. what do you do? Like we're having engine trouble. It's like, no, you're not. You liar. Like, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. Like you hear the clicking in the background. Like, yeah, yeah no, the, the, the sound design is really good. Mm-hmm. And John, were you a fan of the music? I did not notice the music. No, I was not a fan of uh, much of the fan of the music in this. It sounded more okay. like a carnival in this one for me. Mm. But I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't. I don't think it meant to be as orchestra based as some of the other movies we've seen. I don't think mm. that's what they were going for. In did a you way, like it as much as the other ones. In a way, I actually uh, I liked the music. I'd have to say because it it almost mm-hmm. brings me back. Like this is like. This is like when flying was still very young and mm-hmm. it had a sort of innocence about it, right? Going up into the clouds. And I kind of got that sense with this sort of musical suite that, you know, it was trying to convey that. But. Yeah. Especially the moment when he's telling like, uh, feel the story about like his dream sequence almost when he got turned yeah. into a pig uh, that and was he's cool. seen yeah. the, the other planes and stuff like that. I love that sequence so yeah. much. Yeah. That yeah. was really, really that was cool. such, I mean, there were so many good sequences in this movie too, that were just incredible. Like obviously every fight scene was good, but like, I really enjoyed them building the plane too. Like I love the oh. scenes of when they're, when Fia's just drawing, like the, then he comes in and he's like, you know, they're looking at the drawings together and just oh, no, Kyle, yeah. do you want to tell everyone about your favorite? Yeah. Oh, yeah no, no. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's the thing. So I want to say that probably the strongest part of this movie wasn't like the climax. It was the middle part where they're yes. at, where they're at Piccolo SPA. Right. And like mm-hmm. fixing up his plane. Like, so what Nick was just talking about was, was the uh, where where we have this scene where basically Theo is drafting the plane and there's this light coming in from the canal and there's a boat going by gently and it's just like I'm just like I would I want to make out with the scene like if it were a person <laughs> not like, the kid not the, the kid the, the scene. scene the scene okay <laughs> and then, to make it clear like, she is seventeen yes yes <laughs> and then and then uh, the one uh, where Theo is working uh, by night um, on the refit of of uh, Porco's plane. Um, we, so yeah. we have like a single point of light right in the workshop and it's kind of dimly illuminating stuff, but we, but it's like focused on her as she's like tinkering with, and I'm like, that's, oh man, it was, it was like, Mwah. um, and then, um, the whole, Italiano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then the whole sequence with the, with, um, the, the, uh, the Piccolo family, uh, coming out, like, oh, they, <laughs> that was where, that was where a lot of the comedy was for me, just like with the, with like the, um, like for his family members are coming, he's like, there's Marietta and there's so and so, and and the three old hags showed up. Like, <laughs> and then, three old hags. And then like, um, still alive. <laughs> the the grace scene, like, was yeah. I I laughed out loud. Yes. Like, yeah. That was great. It's like, and uh, please forgive us for building a fighter plane with the hands of women. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then he's like, you like Theo? Don't touch her. <laughs> and then, and then Porco is just like, "Don't worry, 
I get tired just by looking at her. You know, <laughs> yeah. just looking at her makes me tired. You yeah, know? it's so good. I there was some really good lines in this movie, and I, I one of my favorites. We'll we'll end the the video with this, and then we'll head over to the podcast where we can talk about womanizing and all this other weird stuff going on this <laughs> this one but join us on the podcast for that kind of stuff we have a lot of a lot of notes on that but um i love when he quotes himself in the movie he's he's like you know gone yeah. you know, or fa- farewell to the days in the archaeotic or whatever and you know the days will blunder or whatever and he's like is that shakespeare he's like no it's porco <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Farewell to freedom in the Adriatic and to days of wild abandon. What is that, Shakespeare? No, it's Porco. See you later. <laughs> I was like, yes, 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 it's so awesome. He quotes himself. Yeah. <laughs> and he just does it as he's walking off. Like, doesn't even turn his nose. It's Porco. <laughs> it's so good. Like, oh my gosh, guys. Well, I really enjoyed it. I know this was your guys' first viewings. Did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was, oh, yeah. Is it up there as one of your favorites or is it just like a steady middle ground movie for Miyazaki? Is, not, not like all time favorites. It is a solid pillar in the middle. Oh, that's a good Solid. way of like, saying that. Yeah. <laughs> John? Yeah, no, I would say it's just, again, kind of like the last movie we did, it's another solid Miyazaki film. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but it's also, it's like in the solid company of those. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, we're, we're going to head over to the podcast right now, guys. Go follow us on. Uh, we're going to head over to the podcast. Spotify, right there. Yeah. Apple podcast Nick, are you having a stroke? And then we also on Audible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for saving me there. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it a total of a baker's dozen. Is that Chris Farley over the <laughs> SNL? But, <laughs> but um, anyways, guys, if you guys uh, enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Let us know down below if this was your favorite Miyazaki movie. It was just okay. If there are things you liked, didn't like about the movie. And then. And if you're on Instagram, follow Kyle. Pecos with a zero. He's an amazing artist. If you like this movie with the 2D artwork, you'll love Kyle's page. Tons of 2D artwork and colored pencils and digital stuff. It's amazing. Really, really fun stuff and a nice variety of things, too. So even if you happen to like this, you're probably going to like this, too. And so there's all kinds of different things to take a look at. So check that out. Check out azart.space for all the audio and video links. And we'll see you on the next Azart. 